Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghost and Spirits Special Edition video. I teased this the other day when I was mentioning that I was on a trip involving a ghost hunt, another one of my beloved ghost hunts, this time in Seguin, Texas. It has to do with a location that's known as the Magnolia Hotel, which I was so excited to go to because for the first time ever, I'd be going to an actual location visited by the Ghost Adventures crew. You know me, the, uh, if you know me for years on this show, you know how much I absolutely love the Ghost Adventures show. To, so to eventually just one day see an episode which featured this hotel and then realize how close it is, about an hour's drive from my location, then I immediately set forth to try to find the next available tour spot. And I was able to do so just this past weekend, so I'm going to show a bunch of photos, a bunch. I took as many as I could of the two and a half hour tour that I was in, and then also I'll share some of the experiences and I'll highlight some of the best stuff I have seen yet. I captured yet again another orb. And I also captured, if you can believe this, an actual shadow figure with two red eyes, too. And I'll highlight that here in a minute. And then I'll also mention the experience I had when it came to uh, being actually touched by a ghost. I believe I actually got touched by a ghost. Yes, indeed. So first, just a brief history of the Magnolia Hotel. You're looking at it now, in fact, from the outside beautiful looking hotel very very old hotel i think it's actually the oldest hotel in texas that's or one of the oldest at least that's still in somewhat of an operation uh, it's not technically a hotel right now but it is still basically open to the public so that's why it's been around for a long time in fact it was basically created somewhere i think it was in 1844 or mid 1800s to be specific there in Seguin, Texas. If you're wondering where Seguin, Texas is, it's about maybe uh, 30 minutes or so outside of San Antonio. So not too far out. On my end from the Austin area, it's about 55 minutes specifically on Google Maps. But yes, when I went there and I saw it in person, basically it looks just like one big giant square. Two floors tall. Um, there's one main entrance and then one back entrance as well do not let the size of the hotel deceive you it looks smaller in person but once you go inside it was like this huge labyrinth of rooms and floors of stuff that we just went through one by one now the Magnolia Hotel was again created back in the mid 1800s it enjoyed a good time period of popularity because just during that time it was one of the most places best places to go to within that location it was it definitely was a social scene lots of popular people went there lots of popular people stayed people that were traveling just regular people to and from locations they used this as a place to visit it, it, it definitely became like the talk of the town for a good while it was only eventually until some other hotels started being built in that location using more I guess what was considered advanced construction and they boasted on it that it kind of drew away a little bit of the, uh, the the mystique a little bit of the popularity of this hotel and then finally it was constructed or changed to become apartment buildings I believe this was somewhere in the early 1900s or so like in the 1930s to be specific it was bought out by another family and it was used as regular apartments for about another 60 something years and then after that point it was just flat out abandoned um, in fact this is a good picture here that showcases is in its abandoned state it was just basically left in a state of living decay even though it was considered a uh, historical place it was also on a list of the most endangered historical places because of its abandonment and then it somewhere in 2013 there were some new buyers which were actually the hosts of this tour uh, they went by the name of Jim and Aaron a very nice couple um, uh, they were the ones that were there for this tour specifically uh, they definitely love 
this hotel the history associated with it and they have gone through a painstaking process of converting it back to its glory so very big kudos to them for being able to do all this work it shows because the bottom floor has been painstakingly recreated it looks beautiful you'll see it in the pictures that you're looking at now but the top floor still remains pretty much as is from the earlier abandoned days so it was a quite diff quite stark difference between too but I imagine that once everything is finished it'll be absolutely just beautiful who knows if it'll just it'll be even be reopened as a hotel maybe even like as a bed and breakfast that kind of stuff but it's absolutely enjoying its popularity now due to its long history of ghosts so let's talk about that now yes indeed uh, because of the length of time that this hotel has been open and the history that it's had all these people passing through it good and bad multiple murders and killings within the hotel too according to the host um, Aaron uh, all this stuff has culminated in no less than 15 ghosts within the hotel itself this is all again according to the great information that the host Aaron was mentioning so somewhere within that hotel there resides over a dozen ghosts to this very day and the way the tour started is we all began basically on the first floor which was a nice location you're looking at it now uh, this floor uh, was an area I think it was the main visiting area what used to be the main visiting area whenever there was a, a party or something else happening in the hotels old days it looks beautiful I mean it showcases the smaller room but still it was very quaint very humbly very homely but yes it was a really really great addition lots of neat little artifacts in there too this place by the way was where I felt my ghost encounter when I was mentioning earlier that I was touched by a ghost it actually happened here in this room so I was sitting in the couch with a lot of the other people there uh, I think there was a total of about 20 people within the group and Aaron was just starting the tour going over the expectations and then starting the history on it when I felt this weird not icy but not, but but not not too cold sensation on my right shoulder it's as if there was a hand slowly brushing towards my, uh, my shoulder like if the hand let's say uh, f uh, face down was actually brushing on it trying to catch my attention it did it once and then it did it twice in quick succession and it wasn't cold it was more the best word I could describe is refreshing in terms of, of of how it felt like imagine if you were outside in the hot sun and then you went inside into a room and got hit with some cold AC it feels very refreshing no that's how it felt when this thing basically brushed me twice and I knew that it wasn't just like the air conditioning in the room because the air conditioning was way on the other side also it wasn't like a fan or breeze because there were no windows open and there was no fan above and the person next to me wasn't actually sitting right beside me no they were about a um, foot away or so so there was nothing that was contacting me and then it was interesting because I just reacted by looking towards my right shoulder to try to see if I could catch maybe it was something else out of the ordinary but no I didn't see anything didn't feel anything afterward it was just that light brush like something was trying to catch my attention doing it twice I gotta say if it, it, it definitely feels very weird to have that encounter and it was so interesting because afterward cut to about five minutes later Aaron was mentioning that by the way some of you may be feeling this ghost uh, it was a lady ghost who likes to make her presence known I forget what the lady's ghost name was but she says she'll basically wade through between the crowd so she'll almost like a um, like somebody trying to uh, catch like if there were a group of 10 people in a row she would wade through them shoulder by shoulder um, trying to catch their attention if she wants to catch their attention and then she, and then she said if you do so uh, then then you'll know because essentially she's not picking on you but she's trying to you know 
make sure that you know that she's there. And so it was very interesting to hear her say that after I had already encountered it a couple of minutes earlier. Then the next part of the tour, we went uh, into the next room, which you'll see some of the info here. Uh, this room was another place, I think if I remember correctly, this was a place more for the women and the children. Whenever there was social events or whenever there were business meetings in the hotel, and it was in this room that I think it was one of the other guests, some of the people that you'll see here, mentioned that they felt something as well within the room. And one person that was taking pictures stated that they caught something, like immediately, like some kind of orb. I didn't get a chance to see the picture because I myself was taking a bunch of pictures on my end. But at least there, um, there was also some good activity. We next went to this area. It was a quick pass but it, she called it it was known as the hall of shadows this is actually i guess the closest thing to the kitchen within that location and the reason why it's called the hall of shadows as they put it is because this area whenever the hotel is much more quieter because they actually live there if, if i recall correctly the, uh, the 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 hosts they actually live there in that location they stated that they have, uh, uh, you know, they see here all that stuff, all these 15 ghosts on a continuous basis. But this room has the most activity in terms of shadows walking back and forth between the walls. So whoever permeated within all these decades of existence in the hotel, all that stuff, uh, this has become, I guess, the main travel port of whoever is there. So yeah, this is the good location and why it's called the Hall of Shadows to try to see especially if you're more by yourself to try to see these shadows walk through apparently they don't pay attention to people they just simply walk from one place to another they'll walk through the walls they'll walk through the actual um, uh, doorways just walk through things essentially until they get to their next point but that was very interesting to to have her mention that as well I tried to take some good pictures to see if I could spot anything but I did not because uh, I don't know if they were being a little bit I guess nervous during that day it was a larger crowd than i expected but we didn't get to catch much well then we went to this other room here this one apparently houses the spirit of a little boy and the way that Aaron was mentioning it was that yes, if you're in this room, the boy has a has a tendency of making his presence known either by wrapping his arms around your legs, kind of like any child would whenever they're trying to get attention, or they'll tug at your clothes, or in this case, they were trying to communicate with it with through the use of a rolling ball and then also with a flashlight that was prone to turn on by itself through the communication of this go so we spent a couple of minutes there too along with, uh, with with Aaron trying to communicate with it there was just this brief time where the flashlight she turned it on left it on the bottom and then she instructed the boy to turn it off and it did turn off actually and it did and then when she tried to instruct the, the, the boy to turn it back on it did not afterwards so I don't know 100% if this was conclusive evidence but still it definitely um, made for a couple of interesting minutes too the next room we went to was this one here which featured a very large mirror on one side this was a prominent mirror because the way that Aaron was mentioning it this mirror houses some spirits within it as well and in fact they make their presence known by making their faces on the mirror itself you could be staring at the mirror and then suddenly you'll see something slowly morph in terms of a face within that mirror too so that got a lot of us excited because this was an opportunity to try to see if we could find something related to this haunted mirror you know I've mentioned some of that in some of my past videos too so I took a bunch of pictures here to try to see if something could showcase let me know if you see anything I've already looked multiple times the mirror looks to be um, like as clean as can be I guess to try to prevent any kind of misconceptions like handprints or smears that make it look like faces so if you see anything that stands out 
please post those comments below. Like that, that that'd be a really good time to share and point to somebody and say, "Oh, look, I see something there, or I see something else there." I did not see anything either in real life or looking at these pictures afterward. But who knows? I may I may just be not seeing the forest through the trees. At least with regards to this room, this room remained a lot unfinished. It's almost like bare. Um, so maybe this room is just being left as is with this giant mirror next i believe we went upstairs at this point and we were able to go to some specific spots where they have some rooms finished not quite finished 100 percent but still somewhat finished you're looking at some of the examples here and it shows again the the great work that Aaron has been doing with regards to this hotel, uh, all this refurbishing. I mean, it just looks fantastic. You're about to see here in a minute or so what a stark difference it is compared to the dilapidated locations. But I'm trying to remember if there was a story with this one, with this haunted room. I don't because there's one involving a haunted little girl, and I don't think it was this one. Instead, this was mainly just something that was a room that we walked through. But if I remember sometime later on, I'll, I'll post it in the comments afterward. Now, let's go ahead and we'll go to this other room here. This one, we actually started off um, in darkness because it was only lit by candles. Only for a br few brief minutes as you're looking at here. Uh, this room apparently houses a pretty bad spirit. It seems like the when we got farther into the hotel, that's where the more malevolent, the more... Uh, uh, eviler, I guess if you call it that, spirits remained. She said that this housed a spirit that I think, if I recall correctly, was found hung or hanged himself. Something along those lines. Um, he was either killed or he committed suicide within this room. And the way that the spirit does it makes communication is it slams doors. Like it'll slam doors, it'll slam windows, cabinets, uh, that kind of stuff. That reminded me too, there was another spirit that she mentioned back in the room of the Hall of Shadows where that one um, was a spirit that was not too happy about all all this remodeling that's been going on and it made its presence known by continuously slamming the kitchen cabinets the kitchen uh, the closing cabinets so they removed those there if you go back later on you might see that those that those things no longer had the doors to them because of that spirit but yes back to this room here uh, she was stating that yes it doesn't have a good presence they've been able to make some peace with it um, I think if if uh, my apologies I'm trying to remember all this all this info from a two and a half hour tour but if I remember correctly she basically stated like she found more info on it and then was able to communicate with it and then gauge and realize that you know they're not there to create havoc they're just simply there uh, to help and then see if maybe it could pass through something along those lines but it seems like they've made their peace with this spirit but yes this was a pretty neat area to be in because she was able to give readings in this room because of the strong almost portal like uh, area that this thing is that this room has and she was able to read some people and engage and, and actually uh, go over some pretty accurate info she was actually guessing correctly names of some of the people's family members and then some of their occupations there too and then she would focus on it and then try to make sure that that if anyone had any strong energy that they would invite some of their past family members to come forward within this room too which she did several times don't know if it has to do necessarily with uh, that's bad spirit that houses there but whatever this room has it definitely has a strong presence on the spirit side so now the next spot we went upstairs so we went through this creepy looking stairwell um, up to the second floor and then that's where we started going into the more nefarious rooms here and the reason why this second floor you'll see a lot of darker pictures here that are unlit the reason why it remains no more nefarious is during the state of abandonment um, for about that decade or so, there was a lot of drug dealers, a lot of, of, of bad people that stayed there, a lot of derelicts, homeless people, people that used this area to conduct bad business, all of the above. And they made this second floor a prominent spot. And in fact, several murders occurred here. She was telling stories from the police department that had to be frequently called 
default to this abandoned hotel because of the murders that would happen within this hotel, particularly in the second floor. And so a lot of the more bad spirits reside up there too. And she was able to give uh, some examples and some history uh, associated with it. Like there was one, uh, if I remember correctly, there was one where it was a drug deal gone bad and essentially one person killed the other one within a specific room and so that's why that room is 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 like a bad area to visit but we went to one area you're looking at it now and I believe it was called the killing room because there was something involving if I try to remember if it was someone that killed themselves or if someone was killed outright either way somebody ended up uh, dying within this room and it creeped a lot of people out she mentioned up front that this is an area where a lot of people feel heaviness to it too. By the way, are you looking at the decayed state of the area? You'll notice it, right? Like I was mentioning earlier, there's all the walls. They look just bad. This is like straight out almost Silent Hill when it comes to this decayed environment. But yes, she was stating that a lot of people feel oppressed here. A lot of people on the tours, they feel down. Like this is where they feel a heavy presence within these rooms. It reminded me of that 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 warehouse that I was at in Tyler, Texas for another ghost tour or some of the people were feeling the same I didn't feel anything on that part I didn't see feel hear nothing uh, when I was in the second floor other than that first time on the first floor I was mentioning where I was touched by a ghost but I did capture this this is a good picture right here to showcase it showcases an orb I did indeed capture one and I saw it coming to my direction by the way all these pictures that you're looking at this is all complete darkness but with my flash of the camera capturing this moment so I was looking at nothing and then for that brief second so that the light turns on within a camera prepares itself for the shot and then actually takes the pick that's when I saw this orb zooming towards me and then I was able to capture it it's really neat I was able to capture a grade A orb yet again it is not a dust particle it is not a bug as well because um, multiple other picks that I haven't showcased uh, do showcase true dust and then do showcase bugs as well. So I can clearly make a distinction between the two. This was not it. This was an orb. So I was mentioning earlier that I captured an orb. This is a great shot of it too. But yes, um, with regards to at least the tour as well, we continued and when we went to another room. Uh, uh, with, uh, this one, if I'm not mistaken, was the one involving a little girl. This this one was one where she stated that something happened. Either the little girl died earlier. I think it might have been because of a disease. But either way, she still houses that location to this very day. Another one that 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 if you wanted to, you can actually um, feel the little girl. Like she'll pr wrap her arms around you, tug at your clothes, that kind of stuff. And it was here that I believe I captured another orb. You're looking at it now. This is more of a streak. Like this orb was moving from. In this case, from the bottom left to the top right. I did not see the orb in this picture. Instead, I only saw it afterward, after I took it. And then also within this room that you're looking at now, this houses a shadow person. Like somebody that according to Aaron, she states that people even see from outside the actual hotel. Like they'll see this thing peering down at them, almost like warning them, you know, don't enter here, don't even think about coming here, that kind of stuff. So uh, this had to do back with, um, uh, my apologies, I should have mentioned this last time, but it had to do with that room. I was mentioning where that person, it was somebody killed him, so it's like the drug deal come bad. Uh, so it it was at this area that whoever is, uh, is here, either the person that killed or got killed, that roams that location. It got me a little excited because um, I wanted to make sure I could take as many pictures as possible and keep this in mind. You're looking at this hallway, which is right outside that room. Do you see at the end that there's uh, uh, a screen door, but the top half is actually open? Keep that in mind. Uh, this hallway is just a nondescript hallway. There's nothing to um, stand out about it. Instead, we use this hallway to exit towards the bottom, outside of the building, as we went back into the entrance. When we did so, I eagerly went to the corner where that room was that I was just mentioning involving the supposed shadow person. And when I was there, I was taking more pictures of it because I wanted to see if anything would appear. I didn't see anything at the time. Um, I didn't. I didn't absolutely catch anything. I was just taking pictures. 
quick reminder to how I take pictures. When I do so, I take a picture, pause, let the camera focus, take another picture. I usually, if I have over 10 seconds, I can probably take around three to four pictures in total. That gives you an idea essentially of how much that, that the time period goes. But notice this, you're looking at it now. Um, I'll compare first this one. There's nothing there, right? It's completely blank uh, in terms of the right hand window. So there's three windows, left, middle, right. Look at the right one. It's blank now, right? Well, we were all outside at the time, all of us. Everyone was already downstairs. That was one of the last people, and in fact, to head back towards the entrance as I was taking these pictures. But then look at this next picture, and what do you see on the right win on the right window? Do you see that shape, that man-sized shape there within that window? Not only that, but that screen top that I was mentioning earlier, it is now closed within that doorway. So remember, um, and you can go back on this video if you wanted to see it. You'll see that the top screen door was open. Now it is closed, and now there's this thing peering down straight at me. I didn't feel anything. I didn't see anything. Again, I was just taking a picture. Uh, I was more, I think, if at the at the time, more observant of the middle and the left hand window than the right hand one. Maybe that's why I didn't see anything. But you're looking at it now. This is, if uh, to my belief, a shadow person that I have caught on camera right then and there and I have zoomed in look at this pic here if you wanted to see those red eyes you'll see them um, you'll see that there's that head there's the distinct neck there's the shoulders there's the rest of its body up until it's covered by the rest of the doorway so whatever is there is actually looking down right at me at that point when I was taking the picture isn't that creepy I mean this was something that when I was looking at it afterward and I saw it that's when I noticed I saw that there was something special that I caught there it was crazy by the way if you wanted to see the complete pictures as best resolution as possible uploaded in their original format I'm gonna post them on my Facebook page my official Facebook page and then you'll be able to see them there too I'll include it in some of the best evidence folder that I have yet if you wanted to see that there's truly nothing there afterward when this thing moved here's another picture that I took again in quick succession after it and you'll see that it's now empty there's nothing there in that window nothing staring down afterward so isn't that just creepy as hell so that was something that that totally blew my mind when I was looking at it afterward by the way um, quick note to uh, Aaron mentioned that all these spirits everything that's there none of them are truly that bad like they're not gonna follow you home you're not gonna have continued haunted experiences in your own residence she said that no um, they, they've been able to to make sure that these spirits like I don't know how but they stay there within at least that location this is their home they make it that way they do make their presence known to people sometimes but otherwise they'd simply just stay there afterward but yes that is the best evidence I have captured yet within my ghost hunt so I promised you I was gonna show you a a shadow person that's it right there so the tour continued we went outside into an area that led us down into the basement this was actually right below the home and you'll see some of the pictures now here a lot of the stuff uh, is still there from the 1800s a lot of the wood a lot of the the railings they're still the original material amazing to believe that that this stuff lasts so long but it's here that she mentioned that there's a spirit of a little girl as well specifically towards the corner which you're looking at here now so some girl apparently manifests herself from that hole the, um, that hole used to be something in terms of like a makeshift tunnel don't know what the tunnel was used for even she doesn't know there's not much history on the creation of this tunnel and the town has remained quite quiet on this tunnel as well but they're going to cover it up eventually but she said that that yes this girl has manifested herself even during private investigations the one i went to was more of a public investigation it was it's a private tour but it's still 20 people there but they do also do 
private investigations, like actual ones with smaller groups. You pay more money, but then you get to stay for most of the night. And it, some people freaked the hell out whenever they went here because they saw this little girl manifest itself and they ran out of there as quickly as they could. So I was hoping if something would pop up, but no, I did not get to see anything there along those lines. But this was going towards the last leg of the tour itself because by this point, we were almost wrapping up the entire spot, everything in terms of all the locations in the hotel. And then that was it. We went outside, we went back to the front entrance, and then that was as far as the last spot, the, the last point of the hotel tour there in uh, Magnolia, and the Magnolia Hotel there in Seguin, Texas. But yes, absolutely phenomenal tour, best evidence I've captured yet, captured an orb, captured a streaking orb, got touched by a ghost, and then also, I believe I captured in that case an actual shadow person. I did share that picture with um, Aaron to see if she wanted to share it afterward uh, there on her website. So I don't know, maybe she'll be doing it sometime soon. But yes, it, it was something where I was quite excited to see that information. I wasn't able to um, feel anything else other afterward, but other people were again mentioning. There was one person, by the way, a couple that were there uh, early on the tour. And then when the tour started, like five minutes in, uh, the lady excused herself and the guy went with her. And then and Aaron mentioned that uh, she told her that whenever uh, she was there right before the tour started, she was there in the restroom. She heard a knock. Someone was knocking inside the restroom when she was obviously by herself. That freaked her out. So once all this story was starting there in the tour, then uh, she wanted to leave. And so um, she and her boyfriend, I guess, left afterward, uh, right after the tour first started because she was already freaking out. But yes, if you do have a chance, you're in, C in San Antonio or maybe Austin sometime in the future, you want to take a little detour towards Seguin, Texas, please do so. Go visit this location. It is an absolute great place to visit, not just for its history, but obviously for its hauntings. And like I mentioned earlier, with excited news, you'll get a chance to visit an actual place that the Ghost Adventures crew visited as well. I'm excited now because I get to re-watch this Ghost Adventures episode and then see places that I've been to as well. But yes, the Magnolia Hotel there in Seguin, Texas, highly recommended. Try to do the public tour if you can or preferably try to do more on the lines of the private tour. A little bit more expensive but they do offer it on a much rarer occasion. But if you can, try to do that as well. So all right, everybody, please post your comments. Let me know what you guys think about all this evidence, everything I was able to capture. I had a blast. I hope you did as well. These are the reasons why I love doing these tours because it's 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 great history to see and then also creates great memories as well. So, all right, everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.